Hello. Today we are going to be reading Freddy the Frogcaster by Janice Dean, The Weather Machine. Blue skies, puffy white clouds, sunshine with a light breeze. Ah, perfect weather for lily pad hopping in the pond near Freddy's house. Freddy liked rainy days too. Splashing in puddles, listening to the pitter-patter of rain on the roof, Snow days were also lots of fun. A day off from school to build snow frogs. The air so cold Freddy could see his own breath. Hot chocolate sitting in front of a toasty fire. All kinds of weather made Freddy happy. But what do you expect from a frog who loves weather? Freddy's mom says Freddy was born to be a frog caster. She remembers the very day it became clear. Freddy was hardly bigger than a tadpole as she pushed him along in his stroller. He pointed at a big gray cloud and said, Rain! It was his very first word, and he was right. Mama Frog barely had time to push the stroller home before it started pouring. From that day on, Freddy and his mom watched Sally Croker, the chief frogcaster, on the Frog News Network every morning. Sally was the best meteorologist in town. Everyone relied on Sally's forecasts to plan their weekends, trips, and events. As Freddy grew, he kept his eye on the sky, watching the clouds for clues about what the weather would be like each day. Some days, there were big heaps of puffy white clouds that looked like cotton candy. Sometimes, the clouds looked flat and hazy, like a big gray blanket covering the sky. Some clouds were wispy and curly, like a horse's tail. Freddy was so interested in weather that Papa Frog built him a weather station in their backyard. It had therm thermometers, barometers, and all kinds of weather gear. On the roof was a weather vane to show the wind's direction. Freddy's parents never had to ask him what he wanted for his birthday or special holidays. The weather books, charts, and tools they gave him always made him happy. Freddy started each day by gathering weather clues. He watched the clouds, of course, but he also paid attention to clues like temperature, baronic pressure, and humidity, too. Then he ran back to the house to watch Sally's weather forecast to see if his predictions were right. At Freddy's, at first, Freddy's mom thought all his weather watching was cute, but Freddy was right so many times that Mama Frog couldn't help but boast to her friends about Freddy's amazing weather prediction abilities. Before long, the whole town knew about Freddy's forecasting ways. One day at school, Freddy's friend, Holly Hopper, was worried that it would rain on her birthday and ruin her outdoor party. Their teacher, Mrs. Fibian, said, why don't we ask our very own frogcaster for help? Mrs. Vivian handed Freddy her chalk, and Freddy drew the forecast on the blackboard. He explained how a high-pressure system was hovering right over a lily pad. This meant the weather should be sunny and warm for the next few days. Hooray! The whole class clapped and cheered when Freddy finished his report. He was so excited and very happy when Holly invited him to her party. Then, one day, something happened that changed Freddy's daily weather routine. Sally Croker, Freddy's favorite TV frogcaster, had three little tadpoles. While Sally was out on a tadpole leave, the Frog News Network hired a new frogcaster to fill in. Her name was Polly Woggins, and boy, oh boy, was she a hit. Every group in town invited her to come speak at their meetings, from the Salamander Society and Leaping Lizard League to the Frog Masons and the Bullfrog Ballet. All of her special appearances kept her hopping from dawn to dusk. All that attention was great for the news network. Even more frogs tuned in to see the new frogcaster in action. But Freddy started to notice a change in the forecasts. It seemed like Polly was so busy making all her celebrity appearances that she didn't have time to watch for weather clues. Several days in a row, Freddy's forecasts were more accurate than Polly's. Some days, Polly didn't even seem to have a forecast at all. Mother Nature is being tricky today. It may be sunny or it may rain. Who knows? It might even snow. Be prepared. 
frogs were hopping around town juggling their umbrellas, sunglasses, and mittens. That way, they'd be prepared for any type of weather. One day, the mayor dropped by to pay Freddy a visit. He knew about Freddy's frog casting skills and needed a big favor. Mr. Mayor, what can I do for you, sir? Freddy asked politely. As you know, Freddy, the leapfrog picnic is just a week away. It's a big event for frog families near and far. It is very important to have an accurate weather forecast that day, the mayor said. Why are you telling me? Freddy looked puzzled. Polly Watkins is the new frog caster. The mayor looked one way, then he looked the other way. He leaned in close and said in a quiet voice, The thing is, Polly is so busy with her frog fans, she barely has time to say weather, let alone forecast it. I need you to keep an eye on the weather so we can plan a great day. I'll do my best, Mr. Mayor, Freddy said. Then Freddy offered to show the mayor his weather station. As Freddy led the mayor out of the, to the backyard, he explained, Weather gets tricky to forecast this time of year. One day it's warm and dry, the next it's cool and rainy. If it gets cold enough, it could even snow. The mayor was quite impressed with Freddy's weather station. Amazing, he declared, certain he had found the right frog for the job. Remember, Freddy, the whole town is counting on you to get this right. Freddy wasn't about to let the town down. Every day he checked and rechecked all the weather clues, at least three times. Things were looking fine until the day before the picnic. If the cold front moving in from the west mixed with warm air blowing in from the south, it could bring fierce thunderstorms. Freddy knew thunderstorms and picnics were not a good combination, and not just because it would soak all the fried cricket sandwiches. It could put the frogs in real danger. Freddy was worried. Polly Woggins hadn't mentioned a word about rain in her last report. Freddy had to do something. He called the mayor and asked him to meet at his weather station. But when the mayor arrived, he wasn't alone. Freddy's favorite TV frog caster, Sally Croker, was with him, tadpoles in tow. I heard you needed a little help, she explained. With no time to waste, Sally and Freddy started checking for clues about that cold front coming their way. Mr. Mayor, she said finally, Freddy is right. There is a big storm on the way. Quick, turn on the TV, said the mayor. Maybe we can get word to Polly in time for her last forecast. But they were too late. Polly was signing off, promising her viewers, be prepared for perfect picnic weather tomorrow. Uh-oh, said Sally. Uh-oh is right, said the mayor. Hey, wait a minute, said Freddy. She's not all wrong. The mayor and Sally were confused. Be prepared, said Freddy. She said, be prepared. We can do that. Why, yes, we can, agreed the mayor, with a big sigh of relief. Come on, Freddy, we've got work to do. The big day started out fine, sunny and warm. All the frogs were playing and laughing, diving into the lily pond and drying off in the warm sun. Right before lunch, things started to change. The fluffy white clouds turned gray and lumpy. There was a chill in the air and the wind started to howl. A loud rumble sounded in the distance. Big, sloppy raindrops began to fall. The mayor grabbed a megaphone and said, Please move your family and your food to the Frogatorium. I repeat, everyone head to the Frogatorium now. Freddy held up a big white sign with a red arrow pointing the fleeing froggies in the right direction. Thanks to Sally and a big supply of umbrellas, everyone scurried to safety. In no time at all, all the frogs were enjoying an indoor picnic, cheering the winner of the fly-eating contest and practicing for the leapfrog race. Happy frogs were nibbling on food piled high on the big tables that Freddie, Sally, and the mayor had set up the night before. They had taken Polly's advice to be prepared and were ready for the sunshine or rain. Wouldn't you know it? The leapfrog picnic was a huge success. The mayor and Sally made sure everyone knew that Freddy's frog casting had saved the day. Freddy had never received so many high fives in his life. Even Polly Woggins stopped by to thank him. She was a little embarrassed, 
but happy to give credit where credit was due. You know, Freddy, she said, I could sure use a frog caster like you to help out with my frog casts. Would you like to be my assistant? I would, I would, Freddy couldn't help but hop up and down with excitement. Everyone laughed. Oh, look, said Sally, look over there. All the frogs turned to see where she was pointing. It was the biggest, most beautiful rainbow Freddy had ever seen. Freddy smiled. Things always look better after the sun comes out, and the future sure did look bright for this little frog caster. The end. Thanks for joining.